You're listening to the Divorce in Your Money Show, the number one podcast that discusses the complex business of divorce. I'm your host, Sean Lehman, MBA and certified divorce financial analyst. You can visit us at www.divorceandyourmoney.com. Now, in this episode, we're going to discuss some ways your divorce attorney might be taking advantage of you. And I originally actually had a much stronger title and approach to this episode, but I didn't want to have to put the explicit label on it. So I'm going to keep it clean. And, you know, I have I have a mixed relationship with divorce attorneys. I get to work on a daily basis, some that are great, that I highly recommend to people in the local area for with where they work. And then there are some others who are not so good. And there are also some in between. But the, the big issue I see, particularly with the poor attorneys, is that they will try some tricks to pad their bill to make your divorce a lot more expensive. And, and I want to go through some of these tricks, really just three of them. And you will see how that they can leverage your emotions to make an already expensive process more expensive. Look, if you listen to me long enough, you'll know that I don't want you to spend $1 more on your divorce than you have to. The reason is, is every dollar you'd spend getting divorced is $1 less for you after divorce is over, for potentially your kids' school or college, and, and just for the rest of your life. And so you have to get through the divorce business, the divorce transaction, as efficiently as possible. And, and look, given all the emotional considerations going through divorce and the heartbreak and sometimes the anger or, or the guilt or, or sadness or whatever the case is, it's easy for an attorney to leverage those emotions and make this process a lot more expensive for you. And so I'm going to just go through some tricks that some of you are actually going to recognize as I go through them because you might be guilty of, uh, of, of falling for some of these tricks or, or might have been susceptible to some of these tricks. And so here's, here's what I want you to avoid. There's three things I'm going to go through in this episode. The first is letting your attorney play therapist. The second is as when your attorney makes you focus on irrelevant details. And the third is when your divorce attorney treats you like an ATM. And so let's go through each of these quickly. The first one is your attorney playing therapist. Now, let's put this in context. You hire a divorce attorney, or uh, many are often called a family law attorney, to advise you on the law. They are lawyers, and they are there to advocate for you in your divorce. They are not there to listen to your emotions or provide emotional advice. Attorneys are not therapists, and your attorney probably charges hundreds of dollars an hour for their services. And the one thing that an attorney can end up doing is is certainly leverage and manipulate and play with your emotions. You might come in even in those initial appointments and, and share how you felt about this and want to get into the details about that event and why that made you so upset, and and this and that, and how your spouse is so irrational, that's fine. There's a few minor points that they might need to know about those things, but ultimately, they just need to know the facts, and how they can take those facts and apply the facts to get you the best result in the eyes of the law. If you want to talk through all of those emotional issues, go get yourself a therapist or A free option is to leverage your friends and family who are willing to listen. Understand that if you spend, let's say you have an attorney who charges $400 an hour and you spend 15 minutes talking about something that is emotional and not relevant to helping your attorney decide your divorce case or help your attorney negotiate for you, well, that's $100 that you have wasted just because you are focusing on something that is not relevant to you. You know where that $100 could have gotten you? $100 could get you a full hour session with many really good therapists. Instead, you spent 15 minutes with someone who is not trained to help you in that regard. So 
Don't let your attorney even goad you or incite you into talking about those things because that's not your attorney's place and it's not the right forum for you to discuss these things. As tempting as it may be, their job is to focus on the law and negotiate the best settlement for you possible. So keep it factual and don't let your attorney play with your emotions because some of them easily can. And so that leads me actually to the next point, which is is when your attorney focuses on a lot of irrelevant details, well, given that you're in an emotional state, your attorney can also trick you into fighting over things that don't really matter. One of the most important pieces of advice I can give you as it goes through the, as you go through the divorce process is to keep the big picture in mind. And you need to Focus on the things that are most relevant to you. And in a past episode or a few past episodes, I always like, you know, setting goals and also ranking things that are important to me. So what do I mean is, you know, sometimes you have to make choices, right? And and what you should do is you think about what the top five things are, for instance, that you want in this divorce. And I literally say, put them in order. What is issue number one that is most important to you? What is issue number two? What is issue number three? What is issue number four? What is issue number five? And then when you get done with that, do six through 10 and then do 10 through 20. It could be, it could have to do with a custody issue. It could have to do with a house or a mortgage or a car or any other things, but you rank them and put them in order. And if you ever find yourself in a position where you're, you're having a hard fight over issue number 20, you've lost sight of the big picture. You need to focus and put all your effort into points number one, two, and three and not issues uh, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And what can end up happening, and, and I see this all the time, and, and you know, one of the things that's, that's really frustrating, and I hear from a lot of people after their divorce is over, particularly if they didn't, you know, they didn't go through this process correctly, is their attorney focused on irrelevant details. Of course, because you're in an amped up emotional state as it is, you don't mind fighting about everything. I mean, you are getting divorced after all. And in most cases, there's a pretty good reason for that. And you end up spending $2,000 fighting over a $30 silverware set from McDonald's, or excuse me, not McDonald's, but from Walmart. And it's one of those things where all of a sudden, you know, you're fighting over every little thing, that toaster, the silverware, That beach chair in the lawn that's eight years old that's really worth less than a dollar if you were to sell it on Craigslist, but for whatever reason, you've built up an attachment, you just want to get back at your ex, and your ex wants to get back at you, and your attorneys will happily oblige. Don't do that, and don't let your attorneys do that, because you're just feeding into that system, and it's ultimately a waste, and you have lost sight of the big picture by focusing on irrelevant details. And then the third thing is, of course, closely related to this, but your attorney treating you like an ATM. If you've listened to the show at all and in some of the past episodes, you know, divorce is a very finance heavy transaction. And actually, the the very first thing that's going to happen when you go into your divorce attorney's office for the first consultation or second consultation, let's say, hey, fill out this financial affidavit or statement of net worth, and basically you're gonna list out all of your income and expenses, and more importantly to the attorney, all of your assets. And what this does for the attorney is it actually, aside from providing some very valuable information, many attorneys look at that and, and they size you up. They say, hey, this person's got money to spend, they've got either cash in their bank accounts, they've got cash in retirement accounts, maybe there's a lot of equity in the house, And an attorney can see those numbers and decide how much this divorce is going to cost you. And this isn't something that just applies to wealthy people. I'm going to talk about what happened to a very wealthy friend of mine in a moment, or almost happened to a very wealthy friend of mine. But you can, if you just have, let's just say, $75,000 of equity in your house, not a huge amount of equity, but a, a nice portion. Well, guess what? Your attorney can trick you into... Well, not trick you, but but can certainly influence you and find a way to spend $75,000 of legal fees and require you to get a, an extra line of credit on the equity in your home. And sure enough, you have, you, you've you just used up basically all of your assets. I actually have a friend. He's a, a very wealthy friend. He's, he's worth uh, tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. And we were talking about his divorce. And he told me his attorney 
was about to was was really pushing him to spend an extra two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in legal fees on an issue that was not very relevant to the divorce, but he just wanted to start an extra fight. And the reason this attorney did that is because he knew my friend was very wealthy. And you know what the attorney was doing is the attorney saw dollar signs and I'm sure the attorney, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta think about something is, is attorneys are people too at the end of the day. And many of them have uh, new cars that they want to purchase, vacation homes, kids to put through college. And when someone who has money cup steps in the door and they might have an expense looming or, or just got out of a meeting with their investment manager and they're like, gosh, I got to make some more money. They can find ways to charge you more. And I don't want you to end up falling into this trap. My friend, fortunately, was a very savvy business person and avoided the $250,000 fight and saved his money and, and was able actually to, to give it away, but to charity for, for some of his other causes. But it was just one of those things where the attorney 100% knew in this case what he was doing and was trying to leverage that ATM machine. And I don't want that to happen to you too often. I see you getting exploited basically by your attorneys where you're racking up thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars or more on attorney's fees because they know that you can pay for it one way or another. And, and look, at the, at the end of the day, attorneys are essential to divorce and emotions are just a part of the process. But you know, attorneys are people too. And I don't want them to take advantage of you or you to get taken advantage of just because you're in such a hard time in your life. And it's, and it's easy to get manipulated into doing things you don't want. Now, look, just because you might see some of these behaviors in your attorney doesn't mean you need to make a change. Not at all. Your attorney could still be very competent and a very good attorney for you, it's just sometimes, well, oftentimes, uh, greed can become involved and you end up spending a lot more than you need to. But what you should do is just know the tricks and know your priorities and you can get through this divorce process as efficiently as possible and not waste any extra money on unnecessary legal fees or other expenses that ultimately don't help you in the long run. We've reached the end of the episode, but before you go, I want to make sure that you check out some really important information available at divorceandyourmoney.com. When you're there, sign up for the email list so I can keep you updated with exclusive information and content that you will not find anywhere else. Also, click on the coaching tab, and that's a place where I get to work with you, the show listeners, all across the United States, be it in California, Texas, Ohio, Illinois, Florida, New York, and everywhere in between. I'm easy to work with, responsive, friendly, and most of all is I get to listen and help you directly. And here's some of the things we cover in the coaching session. For instance, during your divorce, we try and really understand your financial picture we help negotiate the best settlement possible for you financially. We get to keep you from making mistakes. That's one of the, the biggest issues that I see people facing. And, you know, there's things like retirement accounts where things are really, really complicated. And there's so many mistakes and areas and places. Just things can go wrong financially in the divorce process. It's complicated. And I help you navigate that. And then after divorce is we help you transition to your post-divorce life. And you might say, why get a coaching session? And, and why work with me? Well, there's a lot of areas that even your attorney will mess up. And I have a, a podcast episode as well as a blog post, which is the five ways attorneys most commonly screw up your financial settlement and I want you to avoid those mistakes. Look, attorneys are great at the law, but they are not financial experts, even if they claim otherwise. I've helped negotiate over $200 million in settlements in the past few years, and you know, services are on a fixed price, so I get to know you very well. We get to talk as often as you need to talk, and most of the time, I will know you much better than your attorney will when this process is over. And so all you have to do on the coaching page is click on a button that says get help or schedule an intro call and 
and we'll speak. We'll talk for, for about 20 minutes or a half an hour, however long it takes, and we'll get to learn about your situation and if I can help you. There's no obligation. And, you know, just a note is, is sometimes there's a wait list involved. So the earlier you get help, the better. And we can start that process right away. Also on the website, divorceandjoymoney.com, you should check out the courses. In the span of about 90 minutes, I have some great courses, one of which is called Steps to Take Before Divorce, Everything You Need to Know Before Hiring an Attorney, and another great course called How to Get a Divorce Without Losing Everything, 12 Ways to Avoid Common Divorce Mistakes. They're great courses. People love them. Just click on the Courses button to learn more. Finally, subscribe to the show and leave a review. It helps other people discover this information. I'm your host, Sean Lehman, MBA and Certified Divorce Financial Analyst. Thank you for listening. 